Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my blog. Alright, okay, so, uh, I thought this vlog was going to be a nice, mostly joyful, happy kind of vlog, um, so I'm having a week off at the moment because my old brother, his partner and their little girl have come down to visit, um, my little brother had also come over, um, come down for a few days to visit, so I spent the whole the weekend up to about Wednesday with visiting family and I, I've got plans to see them again or at least some of them again uh, in a few days so that's been really nice that's been really happy really positive um it's been really nice sort of seeing them uh they both they both live far enough away where it feels like they live a long way away uh, <laughs> um but like we might not be the siblings that they like, talk to each other every other day but you know we are close we do all get on so it's been really nice sort of like seeing them spending time with them my niece is coming up for two soon um so she is very much a little chatty little toddler um so it's been lovely spending time with her um and uh, other members of my family as well um as i said i've still got hopefully more family this weekend um so i've still got a little bit more of it to go but everything that i've experienced family wise so far has been really great really happy really nice um then um sort of the other side of that i've also started looking for gels um i tried to get a lovely pair through a uh shelter in Exeter. I mean Exeter is quite far so I was only really able to do it because I had the, the lifts available for the last couple of days and I, I won't have those available again. Unfortunately my setup as it was they deemed too small um, so I now in the process of making some adjustments to that. Um, so I mean the play area, the actual footage of the play area is adequate it's just about raising the height uh, of the walls on the play area so that it's safe for gerbils to be in it all the time I figured out a way of doing that um, so yeah it, the, the basic issue with the main cage um, is too small or the tank on the cage is too small the actual sort of like top part of it is fine it's just the actual tank isn't long enough or deep enough um but because my plan is to sort of keep the gerbils out in the play area permanently hence raising the sides um, and making sure that it's secure and it's it's escape proof um so that they've got access to all of it all the time and then having more bedding um in the play area itself so we've got a nice deep amount of bedding to dig in in the play area they've got a nice deep amount of bedding a deeper amount of bedding um, in the actual cage area so that like, we've got like ultimate levels and, and different ways they can sort of you know um some people may still think it's not adequate enough but i think i've provided more than enough of the actual um footage space that they need um and obviously I will experiment with like the levels for both uh, the in the cage and the out the cage. I might decide that actually not in the cage will give them less and out the cage will give them more. Um, we'll, we'll see as it goes. I've currently got it filled to um, what's hopefully uh, a, a decent level. Um, so that's the other thing. It's like finding the decent fill level because some sites say 20 to 30 centimetres and some, some sites say 5 to 6 inches and there is a huge difference in those two amounts. Uh, so at the moment I've currently got the inside of the cage filled to the 20 centimetre recommendation for deep burrowing and then the play area filled to the 5 inch um, sort of mark. I mean it, it's not even um, on either of them so it, it's, it's sort of, you know, it's not not completely even on any of them um, but hopefully as I said the size of the 
actual area that they've got, um, not including like the upper spaces in the cage as well, um, just including like the basic area, flat area, um, is more than adequate enough size. So I won't be going through a shelter to do it because I know they won't be very happy with the not cage <laughs> set up or the you know they'll, they'll probably be a bit worried about you know whether or not they'll be able to escape but um as i said i'm rising raising the sides of the uh tank a little bit more um i've got stuff coming in for that bit today i am um, uh prepared to add um, extra to the top of the to, to the top, top of that if that is not adequate enough um, and whether it's all the way around or just in, in places um, I will experiment with how deep uh, of the bedding that I give them um, in the in the play area and in the cage area and from where it's more efficient to have the deeper bedding where it's less you know um, I'm also going to be mixing uh, wood shavings so not sawdust but wood shavings I think it's what it's called um, with the more expensive bedding because apparently that's the best mix to do um so it, it gives them plenty of, of tunneling and borrowing stuff um, i mean a lot of this is stuff that i knew from my previous two gerbils um it's just obviously their setup was done slightly differently um and they i mean this is the thing is i have read that gerbils can be perfectly happy in smaller setups but there is so much contradictory information out there when it comes to gerbils and so many people are like, oh no, that's nowhere big enough, even though like other places are like, oh yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so I, uh, after spending like a headachey couple of days trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do, because, you know, obviously uh, just because, you know, Celebi were perfectly happy with the setup as it was, wasn't mean any new gerbils are going to be happy with the setup as I've got it is I try to make the setup as I've got it more appropriate as best I can um, as I said there is a lot more space for them to actually dig both uh, uh, in the actual play area because before like the play area was sort of a little bit too shallow for digging um, I you know occasionally try to do it a little bit more but they didn't seem to be interested in digging in the play area they seemed to be more interested in digging in the cage but that's probably because that was what they were used to by that point because it was over a year before I got the play area as I, as I have it now um, so a, a little bit of that might be it so I'm hoping with the new gerbils they will be more than happy to dig and bury themselves in the play area uh, <laughs> as well as in the cage and hopefully that will give them enough space for the digging around in as I said looked at lots of different sites I've looked at lots of different advice um, and as I said they can't even agree on fill levels like they'll say that you want it to be like you, you you ideally want the tank to be like 50 centimeters high and then you want to fill it to a third which is the five to six inches um uh, or another way of saying five to six, six five to six inch sort of mark um or like the roughly like the 15 sort of centimeter kind of mark and then other sites will be like no it needs to be the 20 to 30 centimeters that's a huge difference in the amount of veins for those two different things and i'm like and then I've also sort of like been on a few forums where somebody did sort of like say I filled it to the five inch mark and they've you know buried and tunneled themselves into it already. Um, I'm worried I've given them too much bedding and the person didn't say that wasn't enough bedding, just no, that's that's fine. Uh, you could think about giving them more, it's just what gerbils do. Um, so they weren't criticized, like they weren't told that five to six inches wasn't enough. So, <laughs> and that was by other sort of like, um, experienced gerbil owners so yeah there's a lot of confusing information out there in regards to what people think are appropriate for gerbils um i think i'm definitely going to stick with just having two gerbils just based on how confusing the information is um because like it's so annoying because like some places are like or, or some uh, gerbil owners are like, oh yeah, you know, 20 litres, it's fine for two gerbils, and, and you've got to think of it as like 10 litres per gerbil, and other places are like, or other people are like, no, you need at least 30 for two gerbils, you know, it, it's too small a space else, I'm like, oh, it's so headachy. Um, 
for yeah it's <laughs> yeah fun um as i said i want to do the best by my new gerbils so i have done my best to look into as much as possible to research as much as possible um at a later date i might change you know decide to change the setup a little bit more and give them more space um or uh change out the tank and sort of adapt uh, a different sort of tank for it so that they at least then have like the proper tank space and then i might not need to necessarily put so much bedding in the play area um, but for now i think i've provided adequate amount of space for both running around and digging through as i said i'm still waiting on stuff to arrive to help me lift the sides of the, of the play area to make it a little bit more secure um, but other than that, yeah, it's hopefully, hopefully good enough. I mean, as I said, some people are going to have a problem with it, um, but some people seem to have a problem with a lot of setups. And I've seen, like, some people's setups, and it's kind of like, I can't even see where the, the bedding is, or the, uh, I think they call it subs substrate, um, basically the digging materials. Is I'm, I'm looking at their setup and I'm like, that's like most of the tank. And then other people, you can see they've just got like one big block of it. And, and that like area doesn't have the standing space for them to stand on top of it. And it's kind of like, different people are going to have different setups for their gerbils. And I am planning to give them access to the full, uh, full footage. Full, full, full footage. I mean, it's square sentences. Well, how do you want to put it? Um, which is bigger than what they recommend because they recommend um, a cage uh, or a tank of, or a floor space. They, they recommend a floor space of 70 by 38. Well, the floor space of the play area is 73 by 50. Hence me kind of going, okay, Let's adapt the setup that I've got so that I've got more digging ability in the play area and make sure that the play area is safe for them to access all the time. So, you know, I, as I said, I've done my best. I've done a lot more research. Um, the, the thing with uh, small animals is that people are constantly changing. Uh, like, even in the space of three years, what is and what isn't acceptable kind of changes a lot. Um, what is recommended to you gets changed a lot. Um, and it, you know, it can be a little bit hard to keep up with. As I said, me and Celebi were perfectly happy when I took them to the vet. They, you know, there was no indication of any ill health or any ill mental health from either of them. They were very docile, they were very placid. Um, so, for them, the setup that I previously used was fine, but going forward, I'm going to try and be responsible and do my best to provide more space um, and hope that people will be less likely to think that the space that I'm able to provide is not adequate enough because actually in terms of footage or in terms of um, Centimeter square space, spacey space, uh, floorage, floorage, is it floorage? I word I like that. Yeah, in terms of basic floorage, I am providing more than enough space. It's just about making sure that space is safe for the gerbils to be in without them having to monitor them constantly um, and in a way that can provide me easy access to them as well when I want to do stuff with them. And obviously, yeah. So, as I said, from everything that I've researched, from everything that I've done, I am hoping that this setup, although not perfect um, and probably still not ideal from some people's point of view, um, is at least me you know, doing a much better job than I did previously. Um, so I'm very lucky that you know me and Selby were classic and not at all worried and they were more interested in climbing as well they were both adventurous little things but i can't guarantee you know that um my new gerbils will have that that sense of adventure and, and find other ways of keeping themselves entertained so um yeah like i said i am doing my best with 
set up 2.0 in order to provide more digging space um, at a recommended depth, um, actually at two recommended depths. <laughs> and we will see how we go. I don't even have the gerbils yet. Um, I certainly am not going to try, as I said, I'm certainly not going to try to do that shelter again, and that's mostly because of transport issues. Plus, I don't think they would like the open setup of the play area. Um, I think they would rather have something that was to them more secure. Um, they may even be like, no, you need to have, make sure you have more of a depth in the thing, or no, I just, we're still not happy that you've got that tank cage. Um, the cage tank, the, the size of it is, you, you need to get a bigger one and still have the play area, but it's like, it's, yeah, <laughs> it would be fine if, if the perspective had been cut to the size that it was originally meant to be cut to, because then I would definitely have space to put in a much bigger tank in there, um, uh, but unfortunately I have to work with the setup that I have, um, because I don't want, it's so expensive to start everything from scratch and I have a lot of basic things that I need, um, as I said, the play area in terms of actual area is adequate, it, as I said, they recommend uh, 50 by, no sorry, 70 by 38 and I'm providing 72 by 50, so Theoretically, that should be fine. Um, and as I said, uh, and, and I, and I have sort of been talking to a, another a fellow gerbil owner about it and sort of like said, well, you know, the, the size of the play area is this. If I, you know, were to like, raise the sides to make it more secure um, and then sort of work out the rest of it, um, you know, how does that sort of sound? And they sort of that, thought that sounded fine. So. As I said, it's just made kids making sure I make it secure and figuring out, you know, and yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and after all that waffle, there is still one more thing I need to talk about. Um, so I turned on my laptop this morning as per usual. Um, I opened the four Word documents that I tend to open on my days off. Uh, that's the two that I'm writing and the two that I'm editing. Um, and when I opened all of them to begin with, they were all like, oh, we need to be open in safe mode, which they didn't then open in safe mode. So <laughs> I closed all the Word documents, opened them again, and they all opened perfectly fine the second time around. Um, so I took them to the in the kitchen, um, not plugged in, because it was saying that it was fully charged. Um, I started uh, writing for damage after opening, which is part of the Shadows from the Light series. Um, and the computer just suddenly turned itself off. It's probably turned itself off. Not even like any warnings, not even like properly powering itself down. It just went from being on to being off in that same way that it does if it suddenly runs out of power. Okay, so that's the second time that's happened to me. Um, I think the battery is probably going on this laptop, so I need to. I mean, I, there's been other evidence that the battery is going on this laptop, so I just need to be aware that I need to sort of not have it off charge at any length of time and make sure that I'm, you know, plugging it in when I'm in the kitchen doing my writing in the morning. That's fine, I can cope with that. Um, when I went to launch um, Garage after opening again, um, they, 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 they prompted me with that, uh, oh, we have, we have a save here, would you like to recover that save? Um, so I said yes, because, you know, I, I didn't know how much it had managed to save before that point. And the file correctly. Yay! Um, so all the other documents are fine, so I hadn't actually touched anything with any of those. Um, I then tried opening damage after use via OneDrive, because it's saved on OneDrive, um, both by the website and by my phone, and both of them were like, no, we can't access this. 
So then I started looking into ways of, of corrupting it and getting it open. And I'm still in the process of doing that now. I've not given up on it yet. Um, but it is not looking very promising so far. And I'm extremely worried. I'm extremely worried. Um, that I'm going to have to start from scratch again. Um, and that's a lot. I really don't want to have to start from scratch again, especially because I can't remember how the movie died. So I went through with it. Um, but I'd literally just be starting the whole thing over, um, which might be a benefit, but at the same time, I really don't want to have to do that. It's like, a few months worth of work just gone. Um, so I'm still in the process of trying to recover it at the moment. Um, if I don't manage to recover it, I may put the Shadow Beneath the Light project on hold for a little while um, to decide what I want to do and what the most beneficial thing to do is, because as I said, that's a lot of work. Um, obviously, I've got the first part of the, um, the arc. So I might uh, just start editing the first part of the arc just to get my brain juices going again, just to tidy that one up, just to sort of, um, before actually having to start rewriting it. Um, I'm crossing my fingers, I can recover that file because, oh, so much work lost if I can't. Um, but if I can't, um, my plan is probably to just start editing the first book in the series just to sort of get my brain juices back to where they would have been at the start of writing that one because like like where your brain is to start writing something and you know where it moves to after that point is two different things but i think if i like edit through um first part um get that tidied up um at least start getting that one tidied up it will help me find the motivation to start writing the second one again if i have to write the second one again i think i don't want to start just launching into writing it again if i can't recover the <laughs> if i can't recover the file because i i was like nine chapters in at least um like nearly 100 pages um something along those lines that's a lot that's a lot of work to have lost and to then have the prospect of having to start it again from scratch. As I said, I'm still trying as much as I can to recover the file. Um, it may take me a few days to, to get recovered, in which case, well, that's fine, I've, I've recovered it. Um, I can just keep going from where I, I left off. Um, if not, um, I, you know, I'm still working on other projects in the background. I'm still, as I said, I'm doing two writing projects at the moment. Um, I will look into um, starting editing through uh, the first part of the, the arc um, and then sort of decide afterwards if I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do and how I'm going to, how I'm going to move forward from it. It's, uh, it's annoying that it's this one and not the, and actually it's, it is annoying that it's this one and not the other one because the other one I would only really have lost like a chapter because I could probably recover the rest of it from Jade. <laughs> um, because I, I like sent her by chapter um, so that there would have been more of a chance for me of me recovering it. Um, but this one has not been because I know it's not what she's interested in. It's a much darker than what she's interested in. Um, I know she, you know, she would find that upsetting in a lot of places and, and not really enjoy reading it so I've not been sending it to her but because I've not been sending it to her there are backup copies anywhere so um yeah that is very much where it is at at the moment and that is everything I've gone on at the moment um, I was hoping that this was going to be a happy joyful one and no, no, it's not going to happen to me. Um, I, so I hope you found this one sort of interesting. I hope your fingers are crossed that the rest of my week is going to be a little bit less flexible and a little bit more running smoothly and a little bit more me being happy about stuff. Um, like double fingers crossed. I can 
get gerbil skin soon. <laughs> That's, that would make me very happy at this point after all the effort I have gone through and, and all the stuff that I am doing and all the research I am putting in, making sure that everything is good. Um, and yeah, I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!